My last video on exosomes went viral and you had a lot of questions, especially about hair loss. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Mara Weinstein. I'm a board certified dermatologist. And today we're gonna talk all about exosomes, what they are, how they work, and how they might be beneficial for you, especially for your hair loss. And today we're diving deeper into exosomes for hair regrowth, who they're best for, and what results you can really expect. So before we start, we really need to understand what exosomes are. So, so exosomes are extracellular vesicles that are a particular size. Think of them like messengers. They're carrying what we call cargo. They deliver growth factors and signals to your cells. So these can be cells on your head, on your skin, in healing wounds, in non-healing wounds, anywhere really. They're being studied more and more now for their benefit in helping to regrow hair. So exosomes are used widely. They're in various types of skincare, but now they're also being formulated in serums that you can apply to the scalp to help stimulate your hair follicles to regrow hair. They're helping to stimulate hair follicles, boost collagen production, and improve overall scalp health. One of the key things with hair loss to focus on is overall scalp health. If your scalp is unhealthy, if it's red, if you have a lot of seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff, or if it's itchy or painful, then it's not gonna be the optimal environment that you need to regrow hair. So exosomes do have anti inflammatory properties, which can also help to calm any pathologic symptoms on the scalp, in addition to some other shampoos that your dermatologist can prescribe for you or suggest. Now, one tricky thing that people often don't understand is that exosomes are actually derived from stem cells and there are different sources of stem cells. So there are plant-derived stem cells, there are platelet-derived stem cells, there are bone-derived stem cells, there are placental-derived stem cells. So there are many different sources and this is really where it gets tricky because it's important as a consumer and also as a dermatologist or as a provider of these treatments that we know exactly where the exosomes are sourced. There's a lot of question marks that arise with that. So if they're sourced from different platelets, then how were those platelets obtained? Were they donated? Were they vetted for any disease? Are they traceable back to the people who donated them? So when we think about exosomes, we really need to dig a little bit further into to the source of the stem cell from which it was derived and whether or not that source is reliable and has gone through all the necessary infectious disease testing, for example, before they are used and brought into the market. And this is something I talked about in my last video that so far studies are showing that age zero mesenchymal derived stem cells, so these stem cells are derived from placental tissue and they have shown to be the most effective in terms of carrying appropriate signals and cargo and messages essentially for regrowing hair among other things. And this is not sponsored, but these stem cells are produced by a company called Resilier and I've found the most success with them so far. Now there are many other companies out there with lots of great studies. And so we're still digging deeper into which ones are going to be best for patients. Now getting back to exosomes and use for hair loss. So it's great for people who are starting to notice thinning on the scalp. There are so many different types of hair loss but if you break it into two major categories, those would be scarring and non-scarring alopecia. Now patients with non-scarring alopecia might have something called androgenetic alopecia, which is basically an inherited pattern hair loss where thinning is noticed in the central part of the scalp. In women, the frontal hairline is maintained in this condition, but you'll see more scalp show, especially in the vertex or the crown of the scalp. And in men, typically they maintain what we call the lateral fringe, and so you've seen this pattern before where they maintain hair around the sides of the scalp, but they are very thin or even bald on top. Now, this treatment is appropriate for patients with this inherited type of hair loss because there's no scarring on the scalp. And so the follicles are still there. They're ready to grow hair. They just need a little more stimulation. The other condition where exosomes can be really helpful is something called telogen effluvium. Now, this means a shed. So basically, you would notice that your hair is shedding more than normal, and it typically occurs after after stressful life events, trauma, sickness, illness, uh, nutritional changes. There's a lot of things that can trigger telogen effluvium. And it usually is in the acute phase, which happens about three months post said event. So if you had a surgery or a death in the family in January, then you might notice more hair shedding, usually
usually about March or April. There can also be a condition called chronic telogen effluvium, whereby the telogen effluvium or that expedited shedding phase lasts longer than three to six months. And so if that's the case, clearly we need to employ other techniques, but exosome use can be very helpful with this as well. The places where we don't know if it's as helpful is with conditions that involve scarring. So scarring alopecia are conditions like lichen planopilaris, frontal fibrosing alopecia. It's basically where that follicle is scarred down and it no longer exists. And so it's really hard to grow hair without intact follicles. It's also important when you start to notice hair shedding or thinning, early intervention is key. Now you've heard me say this over and over again, but if you're starting to notice more scalp show, or even if you had a planned surgery and you are anticipating that a few months later, it might start showing on your scalp with thinning hair, then seeking treatments for hair loss or hair thinning earlier is going to be more beneficial than waiting until it's already affecting your day-to-day -day activities. You're wearing a hat to cover it up. Maybe you wear a top or a wig. So try to get in earlier for these treatments before you feel desperate and are trying to catch up. Again, both men and women suffering from hair loss can benefit from exosomes. And they're also being combined with other commonly used treatments for hair loss like PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. We do a lot of that in the office here. They're also used in combination with microneedling. So you would microneedle the scalp first or the areas of thinning and then apply the exosomes. In addition to using exosomes and then using other treatments for hair loss like injections with cortisone if there's some extra inflammation, looking for anti-dandruff shampoos, also taking hair loss vitamins. So a hair, skin and nail vitamin or Nutrafol or Viviscal. So these are all really great vitamins that can be used to help boost your nutritional status so that if the root cause of your hair thinning has to do with lack of certain nutrients that you're also replenishing those. Typically hair loss treatments are done in a series. We usually do about four to six treatments spaced about a month apart. And we look for results after that third treatment because hair grows in cycles. And so if you're thinking about that full hair growth cycle, the growing and shedding phase, it usually happens over the course of three months. So if we've treated you monthly for three months and then we see you on that fourth month, that's when we should start noticing the hair regrowth and we can see little terminal hairs on the head, which is so reassuring when these treatments are started. Now, usually exosome treatments at this stage are an in-office treatment, especially for hair. There are some serums and things being sold over the counter, but the truly vetted, studied, effective exosome treatments are done in the office. And then there are various serums or creams or supplements that you can use at home. And we talked about results. You can expect your results usually within that fourth month of treatment. And then there's always a maintenance phase. So if you are seeing your hair regrowth and it looks amazing and you're getting little short hairs and, and you're feeling better about everything overall, it's important to maintain. So I tell my patients, you know, we're going to do a series of treatments monthly for about four to six months, and then I'll see you twice a year. So every six months we do another treatment, whether it be with PRP or exosomes, but all the while patients are maintaining their at-home treatments. So light therapy, nutrients, vitamin D, stress reduction, all that good stuff to help you maintain balance so that your hair can grow at its healthiest. Things you might not think about to play a role. So smoking, sleep, exercise, monitoring your caffeine and alcohol intake, all of these things take a toll on your body. And I always say, you know, some people get heart palpitations, some people get irritable bowel syndrome in response to, to internal stressors or internal inflammation, and some people lose hair. And so if you're one of those people, exosomes might be the right treatment for you. Seek help from a board certified dermatologist or earlier than later. All in all, exosomes are an exciting new treatment option for hair regrowth, but they definitely aren't a magic cure. If you're struggling with hair loss, consult a board certified dermatologist for a personalized plan. Have you tried exosomes before? Or are you curious? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the bell for more dermatologist approved skin and hair care tips.